Intel has canceled Optane SSDs a little bit ago, and the prices have dropped significantly on eBay and other resellers. So today I want to take a look at these drives again in terms of a home lab situation, see how well they work in a server-like environment, and just see how well they compare to other SSDs on the market. First I want to go over the technology that Optane SSDs use and how they differ from more traditional NAND flash based drives. So Optane SSDs are typically a lot faster and more performant than NAND drives. They have much better Qdepth 1 performance, which has a lot lower latency. They also do much better in terms of writes, with much higher write endurance, often 10 to 100 times better than a NAND flash based SSD. They also have a lot less overhead under the hood. There's no concept of an erase block, and they also don't need a DRAM cache to maintain no high speed. But on the downsides, these drives are much more expensive than NAND flash, and also found in much smaller capacities. Taking a look at the pros and cons of these Optane drives compared to other NAND flash drives on the market made me go on a little bit of a quest to find where these drives would work well in a home lab based environment, and where they wouldn't be able to justify their cost. When it comes to being able to use these drives in an operating system, these are just NVMe drives. If you have a PCIe slot, you can place it in a system, and basically every modern OS has NVMe support, and there will be plug and play drives. If you have a motherboard from about 2015 or newer, it also supports NVMe booting, so to be able to boot off of these drives. And some of these smaller Optane drives work fine as a boot drive, as these little Optane memory sticks can be very cheap to obtain. But with how cheap NAND flash drives are getting, it makes more sense for a lot of use cases to just buy a 256 gig NAND flash based M.2 NVMe drive, instead of a little Optane memory drive that's either 16 or 32 gigs. And while the write endurance in terms of drive writes per day is much better on Optane, when you have so much more NAND flash, the typical maximum amount of write cycles is quite a bit better on the NAND drive. So unfortunately, these Optane memory little sticks aren't super useful in a home lab situation. They can be a pretty good boot drive if you can find them super cheap, but at the current prices, I don't think they make sense for many use cases. These larger drives can also be used as boot drives and other just basic storage drives, but I don't think they justify their cost in that environment. And since they're often four times or much more cost than a typical NAND flash based drive, I think I need to have an application where it actually has a significant improvement. So the first thing I tried that might have a significant improvement was using them as a swap drive. So if there isn't enough system memory for your application, it's able to use swap space or this Optane drive to store the data instead. And because of Optane having much better Qdepth 1 and low latency performance, it typically has a reasonable performance improvement compared to most of the other NAND drives on the market as a swap drive. So taking a look at some of my testing running different applications with an artificially limited amount of memory, I saw a good amount better performance on this Optane drive compared to any of my other SSDs I had, but still quite a bit slower than system memory. But if you are in a situation where you have a server where you can't upgrade the memory, but you need more memory or swap space to do your application, getting an Optane drive can make a lot of sense. It's nowhere near as good as actually getting more memory in the system, but it's a lot better than any other drive, and since you can get these Optane 900p 280GB drives relatively cheap now, it can make a moderate amount of sense to get as a swap drive. All Optane drives also essentially have power loss protection too, and that's because there isn't anything affected by a loss of power. All the data on this drive is being stored on the Optane chips, which are non-volatile, and there's no DRAM cache or anything that has to store the data. And because Optane is much better when it comes to write performance, it doesn't need a cache to be able to work at its full performance. So in applications that are dependent on having power loss protection drives, so for example a log drive in ZFS, these drives do extremely well. A lot of NAND flash drives, especially consumer grade drives, don't have power loss protection. And if you want them to actually securely write the data to the NAND flash chips, it takes a lot of time. And these Optane drives will smoke them in performance. Some examples of this that I did testing with is a ZFS log drive. Ceph also does really well here. Some database drives really specialize from this sort of stuff. So if you like using any of those applications where you want to have secure writes, it's super useful. Another application that I use this Optane drive in is a special drive in ZFS. A special drive in ZFS stores metadata and a lot of information about the data on the actual drive. So this drive will store information like where all the files are on the disks, and then the disks store the actual data. And adding a special drive to ZFS will significantly speed up a lot of file system operations. Like are you tired about waiting for LS to look at all your files and list them all, or doing a lot of copy operations of small files? Getting a special drive will speed that up, and these Optane drives are some of the fastest drives for that on the market. And typically you don't need that large of a special drive, so 900p actually works pretty well here. Taking a look at special drive performance brings up another thing to talk about with these drives performance. 
while these drives are still some of the fastest drives on the market when it comes to Q-depth 1 and latency performance, they aren't that great in terms of sequential performance, which is the big number that a lot of people look at. These 900Ps are actually fairly slow at sequential performance, only a little bit over 2 gigabytes per second max speeds. And while the random performance is pretty good, not everything is random performance, and these new drives that can do over 10 gigabytes per second sequential performance are starting to make these drives look kind of slow. And since Optane is pretty much dead, these drives aren't going to be getting any faster. There are other Optane drives you can look at if you want a bit better sequential performance. Like the P5800X is an enterprise drive, which is kind of a second generation of drive, which never existed as a consumer grade drive, which is kind of the fastest drive for some applications if you have the money to spend. Talking about different types of Optane drives brings up a lot of the drives that Intel made on their market. Some of the data center Optane drives were a little bit interesting. For example, the P1600X is a 100 gigabyte M.2 2280 Optane drive that has a lot of the massive write performance improvements that a lot of the data center drives do and the power loss protection. This can work really nice as something like a log drive in ZFS, especially since it can sit in a standard M.2 drive that fits into a lot of motherboards these days, so you don't need to use another storage slot or PCIe slot for that drive. Personally, I'm kind of upset that it got canceled because I was hoping to see how this technology would advance. Since these Optane drives are still some of the fastest Q-Depth 1 drives over five years after their release, I can only imagine what a couple generations later would bring us. But since it's been canceled, I guess we'll never know unless another company brings this technology back again. When I was doing the testing in this video, I think I kind of had the same problem that Intel had. It's super cool technology, it performs really well in some workloads, but on average, SSDs are getting pretty darn fast, and the difference between a relatively slow SSD and a relatively fast SSD in a lot of workloads is pretty small, and since there's a huge price premium for these Optane drives, it's pretty hard to justify spending that much more money for an Optane drive for a relatively small performance uplift. Let me know what experience you guys have had with Optane drives in the comments below, and if you've worked with them and how they've worked for you. And also if you're planning to get an Optane drive or if there's a price you're waiting for them to get to to put in a home server, or if you're just going to ignore the Optane drives and wait for NAND drives to get better in the future. Thanks for watching.